So, if you saw the title of this video, then you're probably thinking, is the Honda Pilot a reliable vehicle? Let me just answer it flat out. In general, yes, the Honda Pilot is a very reliable vehicle. So far, it's at 285,350 miles. Hey all you people, what is going on? Today we are in a 2006 Honda Pilot. I'll try and get this done as quick as possible because the light's going down right now, but this is one of the first nice days we've had in all of 2020. <laughs> this thing. <laughs> okay, so the two things we're going to be looking at today with this Honda Pilot are quality and reliability. You might think those two traits are the same thing, but really, they just go hand in hand. I like to think of reliability as a sub-trait of quality. So, the reliability of a vehicle is just its ability to keep working as a cohesive machine solely with typical routine maintenance. What do I mean by that? I mean, I mean fluid changes, um, belt servicing, anything that the dealer recommends that you do at certain intervals. While the quality of a vehicle focuses more on the build of the car and its ability to withstand wear and tear. And uh, sometimes its ability to withstand neglect and abuse. So in my opinion, those are the two differences between quality and reliability. All dents and scratches aside, this Honda is still clinging to life. Eric, the owner, relentlessly beats on this car, but it starts up every morning. Being a New England vehicle, of course it's going to get a bit of rust, but for what this car has been through, it seems fairly resistant to rotting. A couple of common issues with the first generation Honda Pilot are a lot of uh, small electrical issues. The ignition switch issue, where I, I think it just makes it impossible to turn the actual ignition. Ooh, this road is... A little cabin's a little creaky. That's all right. Oh, oh now we're on a dirt road. I didn't mean to take it on this road, but uh, I guess we're testing out the suspension right now. This is going straight on the steering wheel. <laughs> a lot of the early pilots suffered from transmission issues, transmission failures. To my knowledge, this is the original transmission. 285,000 miles on it. That's pretty good. Ooh. Ooh, the downshift is really hard in this. So. The most reliable Honda Pilot ever made is more than likely the 2008 model. Because at that point, the car had already been out for about six years or so, and Honda had time to diagnose and iron out all those mechanical bugs. And that's kind of the thing about redesigns. When a car manufacturer decides to redesign, woo, first gen Viper, what? It's when a car manufacturer decides to redesign a car, they're kind of starting from scratch in a way. So as the redesign kind of ages, the manufacturer has to go through and address a whole new set of quality and reliability issues. And that's why I kind of strongly believe that you should never buy the very first model year of a redesigned vehicle. Wait until the manufacturer works out the bugs. Too many times have my family or friends bought the first model year of a vehicle. My parents actually had a, a 98 Honda Accord and a 99 Honda Odyssey, both uh, the, the first model years of the vehicles, and they were just plagued with electrical issues, transmission issues. It was generally a pretty good car, but again, first model year. The Odyssey, same issues. That was the first year that they had the electronic sliding doors and they would never line up properly. The electrical connections would never connect properly. That transmission failed the little after 100,000 miles. To my knowledge, these were just kind of inherent issues with the cars themselves. But the electrical issues and transmission issues seemed to be kind of a trend with Honda in the late 90s and early 2000s. The Honda Pilot was really no different from the Honda Odyssey and the Accord, but mostly the early model year Honda Pilots, especially the 03 a lot of issues, because this was a brand new model at the time. It had just come out in 03. Many transmission failures around 100,000 miles. And there was the strange ignition switch issue that I mentioned earlier, where Honda actually recalled around 870,000 cars in total. Eric actually fixed it himself, which is kind of cool. He got the part or whatever for 150 bucks, where the dealer had quoted him, you know, seven, $800. According to some people online, the later Honda Pilot model years, they really started figuring out their transmissions. So the owner of this car, 
in a way, is kind of playing this game where he's trying to see how long he can get this car to run. He's a mason. He can go out right now and, and buy a truck for his job, but he just wants to see how long he can, he can get this thing to run. So far, it's at 285,350 miles. He originally got it at 109,000 miles, so I'm not sure what they did before he got it. Uh, to my knowledge, it's original engine, original transmission, most of the original drivetrain components. But anyway, some of the typical issues with the first gen pilot, and he's experienced a few of these, like the radio will just randomly shut off. It has a mind of its own. Sometimes it doesn't work. Be driving and it'll just, it'll just shut off. Nothing will bring it back on. Tap it, shut the car off. And then, and then like a, a day later, I'll just be driving and and suddenly it comes on. Some of the wiring's gotten screwed up. Like the horn doesn't work. The owner of this is kind of like, uh, have you ever seen that episode of, of Mighty Car Mods where they go to Cuba? And the Cubans will do anything to keep their cars running for as long as possible. It's a bunch of like homegrown car remedies where they have duct tape and, and other stuff like that just fixing the cars, hold, basically holding the car together. This is kind of an example of that. Eric, the owner, he basically does all the, the maintenance himself. Um, he's got various parts of the exhaust just held on with wires. He's got the, the air intake held on with a wire. I don't know, it, it's fun for him. That, that's his kind of thing. He just wants to do it like homemade kind of car remedies. And I think that's really cool. Like, it's just dual work myself. Woo, look at that. Yeah. Nice. Right here, I welded that myself. Oh, dang. I put them in there. Look at those clean welds. Had to put this whole thing back on. Yeah. He doesn't need to keep this car going, but he decides to. So right now, it's actually misfiring pretty bad. I had the scan tool plugged in. He's gone roughly 180,000 miles since he bought this car used. He hasn't changed the ignition coils or the spark plugs, not once. That's probably why it's misfiring. So we're gonna change those, um, and I'm sure that'll clear the problem right up. interior of the pilot has held up surprisingly well to wear and tear. With almost all of the leather still intact, all of the vents and windows remaining functional, and all of the knobs and door handles still attached. Honda has always had well-built interiors. He oh, said it's kind of leaking power steering fluid, so... Every time I really hit the gas in this car, I, I cross my fingers because I feel like this transmission is fragile. But that being said, Eric, for his job, basically tows a trailer every single day of the week. And that's really impressive. Blows. Blows. Teamwork makes the dream work. These guys are amazing. <laughs> Ooh, you need a candle that smells like that. At this point, he is having a couple issues with um, four-wheel drive. Uh, it doesn't go into four-wheel drive anymore. It's only rear-wheel drive. Uh, I'm gonna have to look into that a little more and try and diagnose the issue with him. I'm not gonna lie to you, this thing is beat up. It's mostly from Eric using it for work every day, but according to him, never left him stranded, not once. Hear that? Because of the misfire, it's making the engine kind of shake, but the motor mounts are just shot. Now, I think it'd be very unfair to test the zero to 60 performance in this car. First of all, because it's misfiring pretty bad. And second of all, because I don't want to damage this transmission. This is his work vehicle, so I'm gonna respect it. But this is Honda's claimed zero to 60 time right here. Let's give this a shot. Fortunately, I Honestly, I noticed the biggest difference when I use this on my GTI because it's a, a direct injection. Um, they have, you know, carbon buildup issues. This car has, I'm just gonna round it to 300,000 miles and that's, that is quite a bit. So I'm sure there's gonna be something that the seafoam will do. Almost kind of scary to drive, just it needs it needs a lot of work, but hey, it's it's still getting his trailer from job site to job site 
five, six days a week. What else can you ask for from a car, right? The steering wheel, this is going straight and the steering wheel's like a quarter turn to the left. Eric, obviously he could do a bunch of things to this car to make it, you know, better. But just the fact that he doesn't just kind of proves the quality of Honda. Uh, and in a way he's kind of just testing the car to see how far it can go with a little bit of, you know, neglect. He says he went 10,000 miles past his oil change date one time. Uh, and we just changed his oil. He was 4,000 miles over. There you go. Oh, uh, the other way. Oh. I don't know. Like, obviously that's not good for your car and you don't want to typically do that, but that just shows the quality of Honda. And and Honda, first and foremost, is an engine company. They make, they make some of the best engines in cars, period. Now, I think from this era, Toyota still has a little bit of an edge as far as reliability goes. They didn't have quite the electrical issues. But this car, man, just with a little bit more maintenance, this thing could just be going forever and ever. Uh, very, very impressed, so. What do you guys think? What do you think's the best generation Honda Pilot? First gen, second gen, third gen. I personally like the styling of the first gen the most. You know, everyone's gonna have different experiences. You know, you could get a lemon from the factory. You could have bought an earlier model like the, the Jeep Grand Cherokee that Sam's dad has. That's uh, that's an 06, so that was right in the, in the prime Daimler Chrysler merger right there. After 07, they started to get a little better. But you know, don't just take my word for it. You know, go on, go on some forums, Look at the typical problem areas of the Honda Pilots. I think the closest competitor to this is, is probably the Toyota 4Runner in this category. If you're really looking to tow, um, I suggest going with the 4Runner with the 4.7 liter V8. Everything's kind of just built a little more ruggedly for that higher towing capacity. If you guys have any questions, I can try and answer them to the best of my knowledge. Just ask down in the comments below. I'm probably missing something, but... Oh, you know what? Stay tuned, I'm gonna do an update video on the ignition coils and the spark plugs and see if that fixes the whole misfire issue. <sighs> Alrighty then, take care guys. <laughs> I was driving the whole time with electrical tape right here. <laughs> Interior crocodile alligator. I drive a Chevrolet movie theater.